Hello everyone, and welcome to the weird, scary, and horrible parts of humanity. Teachers are those in whom parents trust the lives, well-being, and the future of their kids. However, as shown through the case of Violet John Burling, that trust is not always well invested, and sometimes it can turn into a deadly mistake. Born in 1928, Violet John Burling was an accordion teacher who lived in a studio apartment in Long Beach in California in the United States of America, living with her boyfriend Miguel Verdugo. She was the daughter of a vaudeville player and a 52-year-old lover and was born out of wedlock. During the early 1950s, millions of young American children began learning the accordion, and one of those taught by Burling was 10-year-old Catherine Frances Erickson. Erickson's father, Harry Erickson, was a Navy electrician, while her mother, Beatrice Erickson, was taking classes to become a nurse's aide. Believing that Erickson had a real talent for playing the accordion, Burling informed Beatrice Erickson that for her daughter to enhance this talent, she would need to practice her night and day. Beatrice Erickson had subjected her daughter to a strange upbringing, taking her to faith healing services and churches that practiced cosmic ray healing in which heavenly curses were conveyed through copper wires on the ceilings. So that she could practice night and day per the request of Burling, Erickson went to live with Burling full time, severing nearly all ties with her parents, with Burling taking custody of Erickson in July 1950 and Beatrice Erickson paying Burling $4 a week to teach her daughter. As a result, Erickson was taken out of school as well as her dance classes, with Burling telling them that Erickson could become a professional accordion player if she spent just one year with her. Every time her parents showed up, Burling told the Ericksons that Catherine Frances Erickson was playing badly or had lost her touch. She also told the parents not to go to their daughter's recitals because it would distract her and the programs were private. However, in reality, Burling was subjecting the 10-year-old girl to torture. Tied to a chair, sometimes gagged, Erickson had an accordion strapped to her lap. She was 20 pounds below the body weight of a normal 10-year-old girl. On the morning of the 12th of October 1950, Burling telephoned the Long Beach Police Department, informing them that her living student Erickson was not breathing. Burling alleged that she was awoken by a crying Erickson who had strapped herself to a straight back chair with her hands and feet bound and an accordion strapped around her shoulders. Burling told authorities that the 10 year old Erickson had some very strange habits, including strapping herself to furniture, self mutilation with an assortment of scars and bruises around her body, excessive masturbation, heard voices telling her to kill her parents by turning the gas on, was prone to tantrums, having stopped mid court at least twice, telling Burling that the spirit of her dead grandfather had told her to stop as well as a frenzy of masochism, believing that hurting herself could convince non-believers that she had special powers. Burling alleged that the only way to stop Erickson from self-mutilating was to watch her constantly and tie her up. Burling also alleged that Erickson had committed suicide by stabbing herself. The coroner quickly debunked this, showing that Erickson died five hours before Burling called for Long Beach Police, and while some of her wounds could have been self-inflicted, it was clear that someone else had committed the majority of her bodily injuries. The death was subsequently ruled a homicide and Burling was arrested. It was ruled that Erickson had died when she vomited up food and choked on it, unable to move in the torture rack. During a trial which started on the 3rd of January 1951, Burling's former students noted that they had been subjected to torture. A nine-year-old student stated that she felt like she had been hurt by Burling and that she would have liked to have seen her die in a gas chamber. Another nine-year-old student stated that she saw Burling kick Erickson hit her with a ruler, and bind her face with elastic bandages, as well as kick her. Students were also told to kick Erickson when she did not get the accordion right. Burling forced Erickson to masturbate in front of other students. Students also alleged that Erickson had been tied to the straight-backed chair 
or to the filing cabinets, including for periods of up to 90 minutes when Burling and Verdugo went to dinner. Burling herself stated that she whipped Erickson when she misbehaved, allegedly at the suggestion of Erickson's mother, and Verdugo lashed her arms and legs to a filing cabinet. Burling's defense was that Erickson was out of control, had been erratically sleepwalking, and was the victim of black magic, which she had been subjected to by a family friend. The trial, one of the longest criminal trials in the history of Los Angeles County at the time, ended at the end of April following jury deliberation for eight days before judging Burley to be guilty. She was subsequently escorted to Toakapi Women's Prison. Of the eight-day jury deliberation, only 30 minutes had been spent debating the culpability of her guilt. She was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum seven-year term to be served. Upon hearing her sentence, Burling's mother had to be taken out of a courtroom, shouting no, no, while Burling collapsed in tears. Her lawyers won a retrial, claiming that she had fainted so much during the trial that she was mentally absent. Following a one-day retrial in May 1953, without a jury, she was sent back to prison, with her minimum sentence to be served increased to at least 50 years. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment, it helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.